Now yeah. let's talk about MediClinic, which has been a thorn in the hot stocks portfolio. And this is MediClinic International has hospitals in Switzerland, the UAE, the UK and South Africa. Now remember, it did a listing on the LSE via a reverse takeover of an entity called Al Nur. So it scrambled everyone's brains because the old MediClinic then got converted, not on a one for one yes. ratio, into a new company, MEI. So we're going to look at it in a minute. And the one thing investors do not like is to have their brains scrambled. Mm. Market mm -hmm. cap here, 94.8 billion rand. PE of 25.1, dividend yield non-existent. Yeah. And there we go with... Okay, uh, let's give a quick overview. Yes. South African operations, we've spoken about that relatively ex-growth, but still there. Switzerland, some good news, the, the, the regulatory environment has actually improved there. Mm. They were going to impose a special tax in Switzerland on rich people's hospitals, but that was mm. voted out in a referendum. So that's good news. And the Swiss operation, the underlying operations doing okay. UK, is a, I'm not entirely convinced about this, but there's a big story there that UK NHI is just creaking and just pushing patients into the private sector to try and get treatment to people. Now their operation in the UK is doing actually reasonably well, but the big problem here is Abu Dhabi. They bought Al Nur. They got two operations: Dubai and Abu Dhabi. Abu Dhabi, quite frankly, was a little bit of a catastrophe. They've had to restructure. There was also regulatory interference there, which, lucky enough, has now reversed. But at the end of the day, we also own the share. We like the share because we think they will get Abu Dhabi sorted out. I mean, the share price has come back a long yeah, way. Yeah, let's put the share price up again. Mm. And Paul, you've got to be betting that they're going to get Abu Dhabi. Right. So this is the code MEI. So this is just since the reverse listing into London. So you can see it did well. It was a 200 plus, And since then, it sagged down to this level around 120. So lots of unhappy shareholders. Look, the Middle Eastern operations are only about a quarter of the business. Half of the business is Switzerland. So and we've got that positive news yep. coming out of Switzerland yes. from the tax perspective. Where there was like the removal of the possibility of uh, imposition of a co-pay tax when you went to a private healthcare facility. But the Middle Eastern situation, apart from the earnings volatility, as Wayne said, there was initially a 20% co-pay instituted in mm. that area. Then they took it away. The problem is... Regulatory missteps like that, government sort of wobbles, create uncertainty. People do not irritation. like inconsistency yeah. when Look, it comes to regulation. I mean, the Abu Dhabi story, they've had to re-engineer the whole business. They lost, they lost a lot of consulting mm. doctors because they, they've got a facility and doctors come and use it. But they were using it for more diagnostics than operations. So they had to get rid of a whole lot of doctors. Now they've got to entice the right doctors back into it. It's actually probably taken... Well, it's probably going to take two years longer. But let's go back longer. to the point that Paul made, that if this is some 25% of the overall business yeah. and the other elements within well, the well, fold are starting to well. fire yeah. on well, Switzerland, all cylinders. Okay. SA, is, SA is not firing. SA is well, okay. let's talk about SA. Yeah. So Switzerland and how big is SA in the Also, the other well. quarter. So it's interesting. Well, I'm leaving out one piece, but don't worry. Mm. 25, 25, 50, and then mm. the spire, spire business. The South African business generates 25% of the profits with 8,500 beds, whereas Switzerland generates 50% with only like 2,000 beds. Yeah. So South Africa is interesting. It's big. It's well established. It's a market leader. We all know the medical clinic you know, operations around the place. But you know, here we have the uncertainty related to the, the NHI, NHI and all of that drama we were talking about. And earlier. there's a competition commission inquiry into the whole industry. And maybe not so much for MediClinic, but certainly when we come to talk life health care, um, government employees medical scheme, the GEMS, and Discovery and a few other medical schemes are putting the screws on the mm. hospital groups. I mean, the medical schemes have practitioners in the hospitals that check the, diagnos the diagnosis and the, 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 the care given to people before they can even approve so it. So 50% mm. of the business is holding up. I'm just mm. going with the math yeah, here. Mm. Yeah. No, no, very much so. And has a lot of potential. Yeah. And you know what I think is going to happen? This whole NHI thing is going to get kicked get, out again. Get it blown bubbled up to the surface because uh, the Minister of Health, uh, Dr. Elias Mozzoledi, wanted to be appearing like he was doing something ahead of the ANC's policy congress. Aaron Mozzoledi. And now, it's beg your pardon, yeah. and now, now it's sort of like subsiding again. The projections they used for their financial model based yeah. South Africa on growing at 3.5%. That's not even happening. No, look, hot? This not hot? Not hot, yes. Hot, you hot. Yes. Definitely hot. I think all of these regulatory clouds start to go away. But wait, 
I know you want to get going, but the other companies are less important. There's mm. one final thing I just want to ask about. What about management and shareholder control? We know that Donnie Mankis, the CEO, is stepping down. Yes. No imminent replacement. That's a concern, the isn't it? The guys that control the company still very much in place. Are you Correct. concerned at any level? No, look, this, mm. this is a big operation, and essentially you're not changing the Abu Dhabi management, and that's the one that really counts. Mm. And, and, and from a Remgro perspective, we've got Yanni Durant and yeah, the team. Exactly. These guys are very long-term, very stable, very careful shareholders. So I'm sure they're going to employ somebody either new or an internal replacement. Mm. It all looks pretty sound to me. So, so we're going hot. Hot for me, yeah.